All right, uh, you know, before we get started, I just wanted to record a little note and say um, this video is pretty long. I think it ended up being two and a half hours long. Um, I didn't mean for it to be this long, but I kind of got sucked into the project and I recorded every meticulous detail along the way. This definitely wasn't a planned or scripted video. I was literally given a file from an, a stranger on the internet and uh, I decided to see uh, what the process would be like to to make it look like it has uh, you know kind of photorealistic textures on it or materials I should say so uh, I kind of just went off the top of my head which means sometimes I had to go back and redo things if I didn't do it right the first time uh, so this is definitely not a tutorial but if you enjoy seeing the workflow of an artist and you know seeing those errors and, and what it takes to take a model with no materials and bring it to like render quality, uh, that's what this video is. So, um, you know, I completely understand if you skip this one because it's too long. Uh, I'm going to try to do more of these Help a Stranger series in the future, uh, but I'm going to try to pick topics that are a little bit quicker in the future. So with that, uh, let's let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to another Blender video. Now, when I started this channel, I kind of wanted to do what everyone does, which is make Blender tutorials and talk about Blender. Uh, but one of the things that I, I have been doing for a long time is helping coworkers or friends. So if they need to know how to do a particular thing, I'll usually just open up screen capture and you know do that thing. Um, but I've been keeping most of the videos private. Um, because they're not really edited or polished, you know, ready for production. They're just, you know, a, a three-minute video of me doing a very niche thing in Blender and then sending it to someone. Uh, but I decided with this channel, I think it would be fun to make a series of videos where I help out strangers on the internet. So today, uh, I saw this post on the Blender Artists Facebook group. And um, if you're into Blender, I definitely uh, recommend checking out this group. I don't use uh, Facebook too often, to be honest. I prefer Reddit or any other social media besides Facebook. However, I am on the Blender Artist group, and I occasionally look at it. And there's some really amazing work being done here. Of course, you'll probably see that work on Reddit or BlenderArtist.org or whatever. But um, this is a good Facebook group. And this guy here, Terry Arsenault, I believe that's how you pronounce it, is asking... Hi, still pretty new to Blender. I'm making a model of a vehicle hoist, but when I try to add textures, lights, or any sort of shading, it becomes unbelievable. Uh, would anyone out here be uh, for texturing it so I could see what it should look like? It does not have to be perfect by any means, but if somebody just wants to try for the fun, let me know. And I think this is a perfect topic for a video because I, I want to kind of do this idea more where I see someone who needs help and if they're willing to work with me and, you know, uh, turn this into a video, I'll just uh, do my best. And so he sent me the blend file. So let's open that up here. Hoist three. And here it is. So I already looked at it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to redo that. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to uncheck load UI uh, because oh, too late. Let me uh, restart Blender here. OK, so now I'm going to click this and uncheck load UI. And that way it, uh, you know, keeps my UI and my settings for what's on and off um, all consistent. Now you'll notice, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I am using a custom theme. So my colors and things are, you know, designed by me. It's my favorite colors and everything. But otherwise, this is bog standard vanilla 2.8. Um, now with my screencast uh, software, I am recording keystrokes. So I'm not going to be using Blender's screencast keys because it's kind of glitchy at least on 2.8 but you should be seeing the keys that i push down here hopefully um, but anyways i'm trying this new screen recording software out there so hopefully that's going to work but um i did take a look at his model earlier and it looks really good so uh you know at least the mesh mesh work is pretty pretty good so you know i'm just going in here and you know let's go to the uv uh layout I'm going to just hide my tools for now because I don't need them. There we go. Um, but yeah, this this looks, you know, all well and proper using the uh, subsurf modifier, I assume. There we go. It looks like he has a Boolean on here. I don't know if that's... What is that affecting? Uh, it's not affecting anything because this isn't selecting anything, so we can just delete that. Um... 
but yeah, so you know the, the 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 mesh overall looks good. So the UVs haven't been laid out. It looks like these are all default UV layouts. So one of the first things we'll do is go and um, properly UV unwrap everything. Uh, but you know, so I've never done a car hoist before. So I went and got some reference images. Let me just throw that there. So I looked up car lift. It suggested um, two posts. So I clicked on that. And I just clicked around. Now, I don't know if he used a specific image reference to make the model. I can definitely see some things in common. For example, if we put this here on the left and we look at his, like he's got this little uh, tank thing here, this little up and down uh, control mechanism. And, you know, it looks kind of like this one, you know, you, you have the tank, but then there's like this little box that sticks out. I assume this is like a motor. This is probably for like hydraulic fluid or something. Um, you know, it's got the four arms front and back. They extend out. I mean, it, this looks pretty similar. But then again, you know, most car hoists probably do look pretty similar. Here again, we have that tank. Um, and uh, what else do we have? So, whoops. Uh, so it looks like, you know, I'm probably going to do a similar color scheme to something like this. You know, there's the tank again, the up and down controls on a different side. But, you know, we have warning labels. We have the main lift hoist bars. We have the two posts. Um, his does have this thing on top. I'm not sure what that's for. I've never used a car lift like this before. But, you know, he's got something that looks very similar to this. Um, but, you know, none of the, the images I've really found look perfect. So we'll just kind of go for an impression um, based on kind of what I'm seeing in these pictures. Um, and so um, now that I kind of have an idea, I also went, I got this uh, high quality one so I could kind of see the surface uh, details a little bit more. Um, it's interesting that, you know, the bolts, for example, are left unpainted. Um, so those will all be one, you know, metallic color when I'm done. Um, and then I, you know, I was looking at this and I saw like it has like these little warning stickers. So I found this and I saved this, um, even though it's pretty blurry because it's going to be a very small part of the final render. I thought, yeah, I'll just use this one, um, just to go fast. Um, I'm not sure if this is the brand, but I just got this logo. Um, you know, obviously the logo will be, you could replace it with whatever you want, but, um, and then from this website called uh, CCO Textures, uh, it's pretty great. You get 685 public domain, physically based rendering textures and counting. Um, I'm not gonna use too many of these. In fact, I'm probably only just gonna use one. And I searched up concrete. And I think I picked this one. And the reason why is I wanna put a floor in underneath this so it can cast some shadows and maybe look a little bit more believable. So now that we know what we're aiming for, um, I'm going to go blue on the outside, yellow for the hoist arms, kind of um, black rim around the little you know contact points, and then basically just a, a, a chrome metallic shader for, for the other things. I'll leave this piece black and this piece black like we see here. This piece black, also probably a matte black. It doesn't look too shiny to my eye. And then we'll go and put on the, um, the decals uh, uh, on the end. And uh, so the first thing I guess I'll do is start applying materials to things and then we'll do unwrapping and then we'll do dialing in the materials to look really, really nice. So um, some of these things I'll probably end up joining together, but let's just get started. So I'm going to go to my materials tab and I'm going to select this piece and I'm going to create a new one and call this yellow arm. And here's a good thing that you can do. So, you know, we could change the color to yellow or whatever, but it doesn't show up right away. But if we, whoops, if we scroll to the bottom of this, there's viewport display. What you can actually do is drag this down here and drop it there. And now we can see that this piece is in fact yellow. So I'm gonna go through and make everything that needs to be yellow, yellow. Now this is just putting a color on the surface. It's not actually, you know, um, texturing. But what I want to do is get my materials set up on the objects they belong on. And then we'll worry about texturing later because 
Um, what I'll probably do is make this as if it was game ready. And what I've noticed here is that these pieces typically, um, not, maybe not a good example here, but like, for example, this one, this crossbar and like the part that actually slides up and down um, continue that yellow color scheme. So I'm going to do that here as well. Now, here's an interesting case. So it looks like this is one gigantic piece, uh, but we want just this piece to be yellow. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode with this piece selected. I'm going to hit L and let's see. I don't know what this piece is. It looks like it's attached to this, so it'll become yellow also. Oh, you know, it's already a separate object, so that's fine. So I have this stuff. Looks like I have something selected on the bottom. Let's go into wireframe and get my brush or my box select tool, deselect whatever is down there. Okay, we're good. Go back to solid. I'm going to hit P for separate and choose selection. And so now this is its own model as well as this. So those can both become yellow now. And I just have to do the same thing on the other side. So we'll select this piece and these two little things. Are there ones on the bottom that I should be oops, paying attention to? No. All right, separate those. And now this and this can both be. I wish you could apply it to multiple selection objects at the same time, but apparently you can't. So one at a time. I think actually what you can do, let me try something that I normally don't do. I think I can hit Alt L or Control L. There we go, materials. Nice. Yeah, so that just copies. You select a bunch of objects, and then the last one you select, you just hit Control L, and it will copy that material to all the other ones that you had selected. So that's a faster way of working, which is nice. Um, and now to temporarily, you know, as we work through this, I'm just going to select the ones we've already dealt with and just hit H to hide them. Um, and then I'll just keep hiding objects as I give them materials so that at the end, nothing will be left and everything will be guaranteed to have a material. All right, so we got those two things. Uh, let's do this main, you know, uh, frame thing here. So in this case, um, you know, the bolts appear to be part of the same mesh and I could separate them like I just did, but instead what I'm going to do is just add two materials. So first we're going to create blue paint and we'll just make it again. This is not a final color, just, just a random color. I'm picking, drag this down to viewport color and you can see it takes over including for the bolts as well, but we're going to go to add another material slot create another new material and we'll call this, uh, I guess we'll call it bolts and we'll make a, a separate one for metallic later. And we'll just give it, you know, a gray for now, nothing too crazy. Drag, drag this down to color. And then we're gonna go into edit mode and with L key, select these bolts. And I need to, I wanna go back to this one. Um, select those bolts and now if we, if we have our bolt material uh, selected with just these polygons and faces selected, we hit assign. And now those have a different material um, than everything else. And here's another fun thing you can do. So on your numpad, uh, if you hit the slash key or the divide key, it will take you into an isolation view so you could see just this object. Um, and I did that to make sure that, you know, when you're looking at it like this, there's a bunch of other stuff nearby. And I wasn't really sure what things were on this piece. And I wanted to make sure there wasn't more bolts that I was missing or anything like that. Let's see what this little uh, thing down here is. It looks like just a hole. Okay, so nothing else really to material here. Um, one thing that I do a lot is I enable this plugin in the view menu called 3D Nav. And one of the things you can do in Blender is you, in 2.8, you hold shift and right click to place the 3D cursor. And then if you hit um, cursor view, it snaps your view to that cursor so you could rotate around it. Well, what I did is I right clicked and I hit add to favorites, quick favorites. So now without this menu, what I can do is I can place the cursor here, hit Q, and then now I'm immediately rotating around that. If I wanna rotate around this bolt, I'll just place the cursor there, hit Q, and now I'm rotating around that bolt. So you'll see me do that a lot in this video. All right, so let's say we have this piece done, so I'm gonna hide it. 
I'm going to go into isolation for this one and do the same thing. First, we'll add blue paint, add a new material slot, choose bolts, go into edit mode, press L over all four bolts, hit assign, and those now have the bolts material. So we can get out of isolation mode and hide that. All right, and so this top beam can probably just be blue paint. I'll go into isolation mode just to make sure there's nothing else there. There's not, so we'll hide that. Now, um, for the bolts, for example, these two guys, right? Um, these are clearly carriage pins or bolts or whatever you want to call them. We'll just quickly add the bolt material to those and then hide them. Oops. Same thing, I guess I'll just go around and do all four of those right now. And I'll speed up the footage, you know. All right, and so all uh, six of these bolts now have the bolt material, so we'll hide them. Um, and uh, so I think, you know, the bolts can have one material, which is fine. Um, but then some of the other metal pieces, I'll do a different metal material. Um, and then the case for this thing, if, if I recall correctly, let me, um, oops, for some reason that went to the other window. So these contact points look solid black, whereas some of these other ones I've seen in various reference photos. Maybe I'm just making it up. I could swear I saw metal versions, but you know what? These just look solid black. Um, so I will just make a matte solid color for those. Um, and then I'll make a, a, a matte color for this. Uh, comp I assume this is a hydraulic compressor. I'm not certain, but I feel like that that's what that probably is. So... Um, We'll go and do those styles. So for this, what we'll do is the top piece. Oh, and I'm going to hit five to get out of um, perspective view because I like to work in orthographic. I only really care about um, perspective when I'm doing um, uh, like render, like when I'm trying to set up the shot. The rest of the time, I like to work in um, orthographic. So if we select this, we can see we actually select these. Uh, um, threads as well, which we don't really want to select. Now, I'm not sure what this piece is supposed to look like, but I'm going to assume it's metal. Um, and so what we'll do here is we want the top bit to be um, uh, black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control Alt Shift and see if I can't. Well, I guess I'll just hit Circle Select and just erase all of this. Oops, and I'm using middle mouse to deselect. The reason why I'm doing that will become obvious soon. And then I think I can, whoops, what is it? I think there's a way you can, no, I guess not. Well, what we'll do is we'll go into wireframe. And what I want to do is just deselect these threads. I don't want to have them as part of my selection right now. So um, I'm just going to carefully start with a box and use middle mouse to get rid of those. And then I guess we'll go back into solid and just use the circle select again to get rid of these ones on the top. And I'm pressing C for circle select. All right, and then now, whoops, go into face mode, select those ones again, and now we have the selection that I want. Perfect. So the first thing we'll do, and Blender just crashed. Fucking fantastic. Let's see if we can recover that. Recover, autosave. Uh, yeah, that's a minute old. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's not too far back. Let's uh, save this. <laughs> um, just to check if we bring back H, we still have all our materials and stuff. Perfect. Oh, you already had a, a floor in there. That's nice. Um, but let's hide all that stuff again. And except for this one and attempt to carry on. <laughs> that was scary <laughs> Scary there for a second. All right, back to this. So um, turn off perspective. And what I can actually do this time, I think, instead is I'm just going to go into vertex mode by pressing 1 on the keyboard, uh, turn on x-ray, turn on box select, select the top part. And then what I can do, uh, I guess it's a good thing. I can show you two different ways of doing this. Then I'm going to turn x-ray off and hit control plus on the keyboard. And it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to, but it worked well enough. Go into faces and select this loop as well. Add a new material. 
Uh, we'll start with bolts because I want these threads to have that material. Then we'll add another new material. And then we will create one called, I guess, just matte plastic. And we will make this a dark color. Copy this down to the viewport settings. Hit assign. And now we have two materials on this object, one that's matte and one that's um, uh, the bolt. And I feel like this was a mistake. This should probably be shaded smooth, uh, but then that introduces some weird artifacts, but we can, you know, before it looked like this and you can see the polygons on the bolt. We're gonna shade smooth, but I'll show you how to fix this weirdness. So I'm gonna go into my modifier stack and then I'm gonna go into edit mode, deselect everything with Alt A and in an edges mode by pressing two, I'm gonna go here and try to select this edge loop, this edge loop, this edge loop, and this edge loop. I might have to do this one in multiple places. All right, there we go, that's good. And then probably also this one in the center. And with all those edge loops selected, I'm gonna hit Control E and say Mark Sharp. And you can see now it gives them an orange color, but it still looks wrong. But we're gonna add a modifier called Edge Split and we're gonna uncheck edge angle and just sharp edges. So without this modifier, um, it looks really weird and broken, but with this modifier, it, it makes everything look smooth, but the edges make sense. And that'll just add a little bit of realism and I'll probably have to do the same thing on here, 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 and here. Maybe one more there. Um, and then control E mark sharp. And now that looks correct. So let's save it. I have to get in the mindset of being super anal about saving because we just had that crash. And I'm going to assume that this piece should probably also just be the bolts material. All right. So we'll hide both those. I'm going to fast forward while I do the same thing to all of the rest of them. All right, and so we tackled all four of those. Um, save, smooth sailing so far. And now we have to decide what colors we want for the rest of these things. All right, so um, I guess we'll tackle, tackle these black pieces next. So um, I'm gonna just focus over here and we'll assume, see this tank we can probably just create a material called shiny black. I don't know why I put underscores. I always do, it's a force of habit. So just, I do it now. I'm not gonna go true black, but I'm gonna go pretty dark. And so that has a, a material now. This, depending on how you know complicated I wanna get, we might wanna make that um, a uh, more complicated surface. But for now, it'll just be that. Now this little conduit box, I would normally make it look like some, I don't know what that is, nickel or something, or some kind of alloy. But it looks like in the reference photos, it's usually just, see this one's like actually metal colored, but in these other photos, okay, you can kind of see some metal there. Um, but then in other cases, it's just painted solid, the same color as everything else. So I guess, um, Yeah, it's hard to get a good, you see here it's just solid black all the way through. And this actually looks pretty similar to what we have. We have the canister, a little uh, mechanism on top, which I assume is a motor, this box, and then we have like this little trapezoid with the lever arm. Now this uses red knobs for the lever arm. I was planning on using a black knob like we see here. I think black knobs are probably a little bit more common. Um, I think most of the photos that I looked at, if I could find one ever again, showed some kind of um, black knob, but maybe we'll go with red 
You see, here's like a black one. Maybe we'll go with red just to give a little bit of variety in our color scheme because that's kind of a fun thing. Um, I, I can't say I remember ever seeing a red one in real life. Then again, I don't work in auto shops very often. Here's another one where it's red and has like the black box. So let's just uh, we'll go with red for the knobs and we'll just make this entire box right now the shiny black. And that button's not connected, so that's good. So I'm just going to hide that. Um, this brace thing, I guess we'll do, let's, yeah, isolate that. So this is a bolt. We'll just make it bolts and hide it. Go through and do all those. This is a separate piece. It is. And the reason why I'm hiding stuff is just once I know something has a material, it'll be nice just to get it out of the way. And then, you know, we'll bring everything back at the end, but then everything will have its material. Now, some of these materials we will need to um, uh, UV unwrap, whereas many other ones we probably won't. Actually, so this is an example where, you know, I showed you last time, you know, this should be shaded smooth, but then it looks kind of weird. And what we did is we went in and we marked edges sharp. So let's do that again. Press two for edge mode, mark as uh, seam. I think we could also do crease. I don't normally do crease, so let's give it a shot. Yeah, it's not really helping too much here. I'm gonna mark sharp and same thing with this bottom one. And then we're going to go in and do the edge split. And what the edge split is doing is it's basically making duplicate ver or vertices all along where those edges are. But it's not permanent. But, you know, if we hit apply, you could see now if we go into vertex mode, there's actually two vertices in all of these spots. And that's what gives it the hard edge. But we don't want to apply it for now. We'll just um, undo until we get that um, modifier back. So that looks good. We'll hide that. Um, and so for this box thing, let's go into that. I'm going to make, I'm going to go into face selection mode, grab my circle tool or my brush tool in old blender. It used to be called brush select, which I like better, uh, but in new blender, it's called circle select and it still confuses me. Um, but anyways, so let's go to our materials. We'll add two. We'll add, I'm going to create a new one, which is just called metal. And we'll just use this as a slightly different hue and reflectivity than the bolts. Maybe we'll make the bolts a little bit less reflective because they've been, you know, they're kind of rough and they're not the best polished material. But then maybe this metal will be a little bit more polished. So we'll do that, assign it. And then we'll also, in the second slot, just take our matte black plastic and assign it just to this piece. Um, so that's consistent. Uh, now for this uh, control box, um, you know, let's see, is there anything, it's just the box. That's okay. Now, again, you can see that we, uh, don't have the shading smooth, so we'll put that on and then we can see that that breaks things. So once again, this is a case where we have to kind of go in and deliberately say that some edges should probably be split, um, to make the shading consistent. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to go into edge mode. So for now, I'm just going to make it this because right now I'm still just trying to get materials on everything. Um, but to get this to be a good render, um, I want to fix up that geometry. So um, right now I'm not in geometry mode. I'm just going to leave it as is and come back to it later. So this little rod can be made are just regular metal and then hide. And then now this knob will we'll create a new one called red plastic. And we will choose a nice rich red, bring it down to our viewport as well. I actually prefer it to be a little bit darker um, than like a bright, like cartoony red. So get rid of that. Now this piece is joined for whatever reason. So we'll just do it like this. We will add a base material for just metal. Um, then we'll add another material for the shiny red and assign it just to the ball. Um, but then it looks like 
over here we have a couple things that could be called bolt. So we'll add a third material, assign it there. All right, and I want my metal thing to like have a very distinct, it should like, we'll do that, I guess. And then we'll make bolts a little bit brighter for some reason. Just so these like materials can stand out a little bit. All right, and then this thing is some sort of cap. This is a separate piece. I'm going to join these just because. Um, I think that this should all be probably, looks like it's some kind of cap, so we'll do the matte black plastic. But then I'm going to hit Control i to invert my selection, and then we'll make everything else bolt because it's got those threads. And again, this also needs to be shaded smooth. But then, of course, that will introduce some artifacts. Not too bad this time, actually. But still worth cleaning up. We'll select these two edge loops and mark them sharp. And then go into our modifiers, edge split, uncheck angle, just the sharp edges. And that looks a lot better. All right, so we'll hide that. And we are breezing through this. We don't have too many more parts uh, just to apply materials to. Now, I remember this thing um, from the reference photos. These pieces are probably, let's turn on X-ray, get our circle select out, just select everything here. I guess I should go into face select mode. Get all those faces, focus over here, get all of this. Um, I think the overall body thing was kind of like a matte color, a matte black plastic. So we'll use our matte plastic, then add a new one, and then we'll choose our regular metal, not bolt, assign it just to the ends. So if we go to solid and turn off x-ray, you know, it looks like some kind of roller that has, you know, um, the metal on the ends. And of course, this could also use edge split. So let's go into edge mode, select, 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 mark sharp. We'll go over to the other side, select, 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 sharp, edge split. And you know, we'll, we'll eventually apply these edge splits, but for now I'm just gonna leave the modifier on. All right, so we have that piece done. Now these were just metal brackets, they weren't painted, so we'll just um, give them the metal material and then hide them. Uh, this piece is kind of unexplained. It's not really connected to anything, and I'm not really sure, you know, what it's doing here because in reference photos, I don't really see this piece, but I'll just roll with it and assume that this is uh, some kind of pulley system. This doesn't seem to be a chain, but it could be a steel cable, so I'm going to assume that it's a steel cable. So right off the bat, we have... Whoops. Uh, another bolt, it looks like. So we'll do bolts, hide that. It was probably the same thing down here. And for this wheel, we will do, um, whoops, didn't mean to add a new material there. We'll do just our metal. And as you can see, it also suffers from the shade smooth thing. So we'll do that. Um, now here's an interesting case. So this is using subdivision surface as it should. Um, but when you want to do the edge split, it gets kind of weird. So I'm actually just going to apply the subdivision surface. And then we'll just do it on the actual final geometry. And that'll make it look a lot better. So we want each one of these. And I don't think, yeah, that's fine. We'll choose this one. All right, that should be good. So let's mark those as sharp. And it looks disgusting right now, but as soon as we add the edge split and choose edge angle, it now looks shaded correctly. So we'll exit out, we'll hide that one. And you know, I guess for this pulley, uh, because I want it to be a steel cable, I'll create, I'll use that accidental material and I'll create one called steel cable. And we'll make this like a darker gray. And maybe if I, if I feel like it, I'll even texture that. So that's done. 
And then now I'm going to fast forwards, but I basically have to do the same thing to the bottom pulley wheel. And then of course the ones on the other side as well. All right, so I'm just hiding those. And it looks like I forgot to do this bolt here. And probably the one at the bottom as well. All right, so we are flying through this. Let's see, this piece, um, probably the same as the the piece that housed the um, lever arm. It just doesn't have the lever arm, but it does have the same problem that you have these you know hard edges here. So shade smooth. This one should work a little bit better because it doesn't have that giant opening that we have to deal with uh, for the for the control rod. But uh, still, let's see what it looks like once we um, cut this up a little bit. All right, let's apply, oops, um, mark sharp, put on an edge split, and that looks much better uh, for free, basically. So are these individual? These are, so this one needs bolts, hide, this one needs bolts, hide, this one needs bolts, hide, bolts, hide, and then this one will do um, you know what? I'm actually going to create, I'm going to choose matte plastic, but I'm going to hit this little duplicate icon here and call this textured matte plastic, because really I feel like this would probably be, you know, pressed from a form. It won't be the same kind of rubber that we used for the contact points. So I'll make a slightly different material for this and I'll have to remember to put this on the other object later. Did I get this one? This one's bolts. Okay, hide. Um, now this looks like it's a hydraulic cylinder. So this would be an extremely well polished surface uh, used for lifting. This would be a little bit of um, uh, a seal with a lot of grease around it. And um, it would probably be the same color as this. And I don't have a good color scheme for this. If this was on something like, you know, a, a caterpillar, for instance, uh, excavator, you know, the, the piston color, in this case, they're, they're black. Um, but I've also seen them painted yellow, the same as the tractor, like here, this one's yellow. These ones are black. Let's just go with black to introduce some, vari some variety. I mean, everything else is blue, so we will use the shiny black for this as well as for this. And then this one, I'm gonna create another material called uh, piston shaft because this should be an extremely well-polished, well-worn, specific looking surface. Um, you know, like if you look at, um, You know, like they always have this kind of like ring pattern around them and we'll definitely want to like try to to pay attention to that. And like, look how well, you know, smooth it is and stuff. So um, let's uh, we'll create a new material just for that. Call it piston shaft, make it super bright because it's supposed to be shiny. Um, and of course, the same thing here. In this case, uh, I'm going to do something different. Uh, I guess we can't do it. Well, OK, we'll do the same thing edge split or um, mark sharp. Um, and if I isolate this, this face doesn't even need to be there. So I'm just going to delete it because that face will never be seen. It's inside of this tube. So there's no reason for it to ever be seen. Um, and so actually, you know what? I am going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to delete this face as well. Whoops. And since I delete that face, I'm going to clear my uh, sharp and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode, select these edges. I'm going to duplicate them so I have a free floating ring. Then I'm going to hit extrude and right click to let go. And then I'm going to hit scale and press zero so that it creates this thing. And now we have um, a face, but it doesn't um, make the weird blending between the edges. Um, and then, you know, I can do the same thing for here, right? So for this piston, it does not need its bottom face, so we'll delete that. And we'll also delete its top face. 
but we'll select the edges all the way around it. We'll duplicate, extrude, scale zero, and now we have a much more realistic surface. So let's hide these three components. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and we'll fast forward through that. All right, so we're, we're looking like we're down to our last few pieces here. All right, so I assume that this piece and this piece are hydraulic hoses. Now, I think that personally, uh, from a modeling perspective, that these hoses are probably a little bit too small. Uh, I think that uh, hydraulic tubing relative to the scale of this model would be a little bit thicker. But uh, since I didn't model this and I'm just helping out this guy, um, I'm going to leave it as is. But let's texture it, or at least let's get some materials on there. So the first thing I can see is that there's some kind of uh, little thing here. So let's let's see what that looks like. So hydraulic, I guess, uh, tube fittings. Perfect. Let's see how this actually looks like in real life. Okay, that's a little bit too accurate. That's what I need to see, but here we go. So here we have the tube, and then there's like this fitting here, which gives it a mount point. Um, let's see if there's there any other examples. Those are those look like pneumatic things, I think, um, rather than hydraulic. But um, I assume that maybe this piece is supposed to look like metal, and then everything else. Now, in some of the jack car jacks I've seen, the tubing is painted the same color as the machine but if you look at like a caterpillar for instance the tubing is usually like a slightly different color i've seen it in solid black um like here the the hydraulic lines are black whereas everything else is yellow whereas on a machine like this they've painted the hydraulic lines to look the same as everything else i like the difference thing so what i'm going to do is with this whole thing selected i'm going to create a new material called rubber hose up your nose with a rubber hose, old school reference, okay. And then we will, again, make this pretty dark in the editor as well. But then, um, for these pieces, I guess let's go into uh, face mode. And then let's just go into um, x-ray, circle select, get all of that. Let's just make this metal as its material. So we'll go up here, create a new material slot, choose our metal and assign that. So that looks like that fits into something. Now, do we have the same type of fitting on the top? We do. So I'm just going to quickly circle select, get all of this metal. So that'll add a little bit of realism and now we can hide that. We'll do the same thing for this main line. The first primary material is going to be the rubber hose. Um, but then it looks like its fittings are hidden behind that panel, so we don't have to worry about anything there. Do we have to worry about anything here? Yes, we do. So we'll go into edit mode, make sure everything is deselected, get our circle select, select just these bits, and create another material slot for metal, assign, and we're good. So hide that. Um, I assume these little hose clamps can just be all made metal and then hidden as well as the bolt we call bolt so the this will be called metal but the bolt will be called bolts or not called but rather um, labeled as or materialed as I should say I'm kind of losing my mind here all right so we got metal hide this should be bolt hide and then we got these ones over here. This piece should be metal. This piece should be bolt. There should be one more, I think, down here. Metal, bolts, and then this can obviously just be bolts. All 
I don't know what this piece is. I'm going to assume it's metal. Have the same thing over here. All right, now this I know is uh, the button for operation. So we probably want this to be like some glowing button material. So let's create a new material called uh, button. And we'll just assume it's red for now, but not, a, not, not red like the knob, but we'll just make it a slightly more desaturated, slightly lighter red. Uh, but then I've seen these type of industrial buttons before, and I know that they always have, kind of have like a metal outside. So we'll make this metal assigned there. Hide that. Looks like we have some more bolts. Um, I'm not sure what this flange looking thing is, and I'm not sure what this piece is either. I think we got more bolts though. I guess these are, are these bolts or are these rivets? I don't know. Either way, we're going to color them the same. Um, so I'm just going to make, you know, I don't know what these pieces are. We can fix it later, but for now, they're just going to be metal and metal. Okay. So I think that is everything. I'm going to save, unhide everything. Um, now I guess this is the shop interior. It doesn't look like it has any materials or anything set up yet. I guess this is the floor. I'm going to, oh, so it's called garage here. Okay, I'm gonna just hide the garage for now. Um, we can bring garage back later, but this is looking pretty good. So now at least we have unique colors on everything. Now the materials aren't set up at all, but we've been recording for about an hour and I now have materials for most things at least assigned. There shouldn't be any object in here that doesn't have a material. They should all at least have a material. And the materials are colored uh, correctly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my own floor plane just for now because I'm lazy. I'm not really sure what he wants to do with the shop. So we'll just bring this up to, well, actually what we can do is we can use a trick and bring this down here. I'm going to go here and go into edit mode. I'm going to select, make sure nothing is selected, select these vertices here at the bottom. And I'm going to hit Shift S and say cursor to selection. So now my cursor is where these are. Then I'm going to choose this, go into edit mode, select everything, Shift S and say, whoops, uh, selection to cursor. Actually, what I want to do is go into cursor scaling mode, uh, 3D cursor, and actually say scale Z zero. And that will bring everything to where the cursor is. So I have to go do that again. So cursor to selection. There we go. And then without changing the cursor, go in here and say scale Z zero. And now we will right click on this plane and say set origin to geometry. So now that plane is perfectly flat with the bottom of this. So we'll make it a little bit bigger. Oops, actually we can go back to regular scaling mode now. And this will be the first thing that I actually texture. So let's go ahead and do that. I guess we'll go into the, well, first we're already UV unwrapped, so that's good. So now we can go into shading and we will call this concrete floor for the material. All right. And so now, like I mentioned earlier from this website, I uh, found this concrete texture. So the first thing I'm going to do is load in that texture and then we will uh, tweak it to our uh, desired settings. So the camera is now seeing through the floor. That's probably not good. Let's just bring the camera up a little bit, rotate like that. And here's an actually a pretty good tip is, and let's see, we don't need we don't need that um, is with the camera selected. If you hit shift tilde, you can actually fly around with WASD to place the camera and it makes it a lot easier to, to line up your shot. So you were going for kind of a low angle. So I'll continue to do that and let's get some materials on this floor. 
So we're going to create a texture node, image texture. You can hit open, go into 4K concrete, click on thumbnails. And so we have color, which is also known as albedo. We have a displacement map. We have a normal map and roughness map. So let's wire these all in. So with the concrete, we'll choose that. And this is a color map. So we're going to wire that just to base color. All right. Then we will create another texture node. We will open up the roughness map and wire that into a roughness. However, in this case, we want to choose non-color data um, because we're not using the color of this image. We're using it to instead drive a data value, which is, is roughness in this case. And we might change this later, but for now, we're just going to use what was given to us when we downloaded the image or the, the material. All right, so now we're going to open up our normal map. And again, this has to be set to non-color data. Then we want to go into vector normal. Actually, I think a normal map, sorry. Put this color in there and then put this into normal. And, you know, it's, it's subtle, but it does make it look slightly bumpy. And we right now have this HDRI but I think there's one where it's in a warehouse that might make a little bit more sense for um, our scene here. I feel like I could swear there was one that was industrial. I guess we could use this one for now. Um, but you know, usually when you work in like a machine or when you work in like a shop, um, it's usually a pretty polished uh, concrete floor. So for the roughness, um, if we get rid of the roughness and we turn roughness down, um, whoa, we should be able to, you can see how it's very shiny now. Might be too shiny, but then once we plug in roughness, it becomes very rough. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a color ramp and just put that in between. And if you have node Wrangler or Wrangler set up um, in preferences, so if you go into preferences, add-ons, and you type node, there's one called node Wrangler. That allows you to control shift click this and see the output of what this is doing. And we want this to be way darker because we want it to be pretty shiny, but not super shiny. So now we can go back and check maybe even more. There we go. So right at that threshold where it's it's a shiny concrete floor, but not super shiny. And I feel like this is too well lit because it's outdoors. So I'm going to go back here and whoops. Where is what happened there? There we go. Um, I like that one a little bit better. And, you know, these values can be played with um, later on. And the other thing, too, is that I am right now using Eevee. But I think when I finish this and I, you know, show you what I was able to do, I'll probably do my final render in cycles. I prefer cycles for its realism. Uh, but now <laughs> we can start to tweak some of these these materials. So obviously doesn't look realistic yet, but that's the goal is to get there so this thing has two materials on it it has the bolts we can start with bolts because we know what we want that to look like so bolts are metallic now one of the things that you'll uh, uh if you watch any like the blender guru series or if you watch other uh series on 3d rendering and and um modeling is that you'll find that metallic is not really supposed to be a gradient it should be either metallic yes or not metallic at all so generally speaking, you don't want to have like some fraction of metallic um, to make your materials realistic. It should either just be 
all metallic or not metallic at all. Um, there's probably some weird surfaces, you know, edge cases that don't come up very often where you'd want some fraction. But since we're doing bolts, we're going to go all the way metallic. Now let's uh, focus on, on these bolts, for example. And right now they, they actually look pretty good. But if we turn our roughness all the way down, they become chrome. And if we turn the roughness all the way up, they look like, you know, die cast metal or, or you know, you know, aluminum particulate metal or something like that. Um, but we want something that's like nice in the middle, not too chromey because that looks, you know, fake. No one polishes their bolts. So somewhere around here where they're still casting pretty good reflections, but you can't see a mirror image in the bolt itself. Um, and then I feel like they're too bright. So let's just bring them down just a little bit. I mean, they're probably dirty on the shop floor. You know, they're probably not like the best specimen of, of polished steel uh, that you're going to find all day. So uh, that's good for now. And then for this thing, this we have matte plastic. And because it's matte, its roughness should be pretty high. It should, you know, not have very much roughness at all. So if we zoom in, we can see we have the bolt material on the bottom, but then we have a nice rough material here. Now, um, if we, this probably should have some kind of interesting surface. So what we can do for this is we now need to UV unwrap this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, I'm going to unselect everything. Then I'm going to hit matte plastic and hit select that. And then we'll select just the vertices that belong to this, this part here. And I'm going to hit unwrap. And that didn't do, I guess I have to go to UV editor. There we go. And that's fine for now um, because we're going to use the procedurally generated textures anyways. And what I'm going to do is create a texture called noise. I'm going to create an input node called texture coordinates. We're going to choose UV. So the coordinates that we just automatically laid out here um, will be what we use. And then I'm going to node wrangle on this. And you can see, if I get out of um, perspective mode, that there is a noise surface on here. So we're going to scale it up until it's tiny little particles, something like that. Uh, but then what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this to drive a, a normal map. Actually, a bump and then plug that into here. And there we go. So now it has, you can see a surface texture, probably still wanna go up even finer. And we probably want this to be even rougher. And maybe the distance or the strength should be like a quarter of what it currently is. Maybe even less, because that look that's a pretty dramatic shift, so oops. Yeah, I'm not sure why we're seeing such an aggressive curve there. But I think it'll also look better. Uh, once we get it into cycles. I'm gonna try doing that again. Something, I don't know what's going on here. Something is weird. There we go. Okay. So now turn up the roughness, turn the strength to be something like that. Base color could probably go all the way black now. There we go. So now we have a nice little rubber pad and 
those settings will have carried over to this one. Uh, but the only thing you have to do is go in here. It has the same material, so the same settings will be there. All we really have to do is deselect everything, select matte plastic, click select, and then hit unwrap so that it gets that pattern. And now it has that nice surface texture. So let's do that for all four. All right, so we are breezing through those materials. Now, what I'm going to do for like these arms and stuff is for now, I'm just going to do procedural textures, which means we're just going to not actually use an image at all. Um, and then later on, what we can do is we can convert that to be an image file. So if you wanted to take this to a game engine, uh, you'd have the image files ready to go. All right, so um, one thing I want to do is kind of join some of these objects. Now, you can always unjoin them later, but I want to join them so that when we unwrap their textures, they take just one texture space. So I'm going to select all of these. and then hit control J to join them. And so now if we move them, they're all just one piece. And the reason why I did that is now, if we select everything, you have this crazy mess over here, but if we hit unwrap, it will try to unwrap everything in one consistent UV space. And it doesn't matter if they overlap a little bit because um, uh, we're just using procedural textures, but if we want to use bake textures, which we can talk about later, um, we wouldn't want them to overwrap, but you can see that there's some weird deforming here. And to fix that, we have to go and put in some seams. So let's do that right now. We can experiment with getting the material to look right because we don't have to use um, manual generated uh, uh, UV unwrapping. What we can do is I'm going to go in here and say input um, texture coordinate. And then we're going to create a noise texture like we did before. And we're going to instead of saying UV, whenever you're basically like, you know, unwrapping things and moving vertices around in this, that's UV. But in this case, we're going to choose object, which is just intrinsic to the nature of the object itself. Um, it's not useful for image texturing, but it is useful for procedural texturing. And so for the most part for this video, I'm just going to be doing procedural texturing anyways, so we don't have to worry about it too much. So we have this noise texture, and if we select that, you can see we have noise. So let's dial this up quite a lot. All right, and one thing that you want to do is you can see it's kind of stretching. This object, I'm going to hit apply scale, and now the um, texture is much more uniform. So something like that. And then let's see what color. I think we have a pretty good yellow already, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm going to go into vector, choose bump. I'm going to use this for the bump map. Drag and drop that into normal. And <laughs> that looks absolutely awful, but we can turn the strength down to something reasonable. And now we kind of have that like, you know, um, shiny paint but uneven finish look um, obviously this is way too big still like when you look at this in real life it would probably be something like that I'm gonna make it a little bit less rough so we get more of that um, you know shiny fresh paint look so I'm pretty happy with that I might make the color a little bit richer there we go 
Now, one of the things you were talking about is, you know, it looks unrealistic. And one of the things that immediately stands out to me is, for example, like the way that this, this shading looks right here. <clears throat> and in that case, let's see, we don't have subdivision service on here, but I suspect if we put some extra edge loops in here, now you don't have that that fake looking shading. It looks, you know, consistently flat across the top. So let's um, add some edge loops in here. It's going to be hard for this one because I'll have to hide some stuff in my viewport. But yeah, this piece looked really fake before. You could see the difference here. Like this one now looks like a flat piece of metal. Whereas this one has this really fake looking shiny curve on it. So if we go in here and just add some edge loops, now it looks like a, a you know consistent surface. Same thing for this one. This just needs, in this case, we can probably just add a few edge loops there. Um, you don't really want long stretched um, polygons ever because the shading calculation does not do well with long stretched polygons. So this, you know, just by adding some extra geometry there, sometimes you do want, you know, extra geometry just so that your shading plays nicely. And that already looks a lot better, a lot more realistic. So let's just add a bunch of edge loops, bring some to tighten the edges. And if you look at this surface now compared to this one, this one just has all kinds of weird shading issues, whereas this one in the background looks a lot more like something physical that you could you know, imagine being real. All right, so I'm gonna quickly do those same changes to this side. All right, so I like that. Um, the center post, center post actually has some pretty good uh, geometry there, but we'll add a couple, we'll add four there just in the middle, just to kind of spread out the lighting. Um, like I said, usually, you know, you want to try to stick to square faces. Um, things will look better when they're more square. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. Like this is a rectangle, but compared to what it was previously, when it was a really long, rectangle it already looks noticeably better just by kind of making sure you have faces that aren't super you know stretched out stretched out faces tend to not play nicely uh, with 3d graphics so let's save that let's uh bring everything back here for a second and so now we're going to do the same thing for the blue pieces so i'm just going to select all three blue pieces and bring them into isolation now, what I'll actually do is select this, this piece. I'm going to select the um, nodes that we set up for the bump map for the yellow because the, the blue paint should be fairly similar. So I'm going to select those, copy, go into the blue one, paste. Now we can choose our three blue pieces and go into isolation mode with divide on the uh, numpad. And I'm just going to straight plug this into our normal. So now, if we zoom in on part of it, 
let's see what's going on here. Is this the right material? No, this is on bolts for some reason. We want blue paint. There we go. All right, and now we have that surface detail. That's perfect. And it should be present on all three. There it is. So I don't like, I mean, this, they're pretty bright blue, but I like this one. It's not like obnoxious blue. And this is currently a pretty obnoxious blue. So let's bring this down somewhere like that. It looks a little bit better. And I'm not gonna put the decals on yet. I'm just going to get the texture set up. And this is kind of my workflow. You know, the first thing I did was I tried to assign a material to every piece that needed a material. Um, and then once I had that, I um, went in and now I'm starting to dial in the materials one at a time. Um, and then now after that, I'll go in and make very specific adjustments. So, you know, it's a kind of a multi-step process. So for now, we're just doing, you know, basic tweaking and dialing of settings, but we'll get more and more like complicated as we go. So let's do the metal bits now. Um, so the bolts look pretty okay, but this piece is supposed to be metal. Um, and like I said, you're either all metal or not. So we're gonna go all metal. And I want the bolts to stick out a little bit more. So I'm gonna make this metal darker, not fully dark, but pretty dark and Maybe, I mean, I want it to be rough, but not, let's see, it's going to perspective. I like that. I mean, if you look at like how this piece looks compared to this piece, looks like metal. These braces up here look pretty good. Um, but you know, it's, it's not uh, super ridiculously shiny, but what we can do is Uh, still, we can paste in that same uh, node system, and you can see that adds noise to the surface. Uh, but we probably, you know, probably want to be very high resolution noise, and we probably don't want to be that strong. We do want there to be some. Whoops. Something like that. You never want your, deta your, your, you know, your surfaces to be perfectly flat. You always want them to have some kind of interesting surface noise. Let's check on these wheels. These wheels are supposed to be metal. I think that looks pretty good. Might be a little bit too shiny for the wheel. It might you know the wheel might be more greased up in real life or something, but I feel like for the most part that looks pretty decent. Now for the, the the shiny black paint, I'm basically going to do the same thing I did for the blue paint. I really just you know I want to have. In fact, I'll just copy the whole shader, go into bolts, delete everything. Oops, not bolts. Sorry go into the shiny black, delete everything. It turns purple when it doesn't have a correct node set up, but we're gonna paste that in there. It's now blue, but I like my setup for my nodes, so I'm just going to go in and make this a dark black. I think for this, the bump map is probably a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna make this even smaller. Maybe not that small. There we go. And I feel like this should be a little bit less rough. Because we don't want it to look like our matte plastic that we have here. Um, for these red knobs, we definitely want them to look super shiny. Not what I wanted. Maybe a little bit darker. I want it to be a nice rich red, you know. Now, I feel like for these, <clears throat> realistically, um, it needs to be tightened up a little bit here. I 
and then you know now it's no longer circular so we have to go in and add a couple edge loops here I feel like that in general is just going to look better I still think that this scale of these is wrong I feel like you know both the hydraulic hose as well as the hose clamp should probably be something like that in real life but you know I'm only here just really to texture so I'm gonna not try to remodel everything but um, that is you know a consideration so now we'll do the steel cables That's kind of what I wanted. So now I have, okay, so now we can choose a darker steel cable color, but we have these bands that go all along it. Now I could probably do this better, but for right now it's close enough to what I wanted for the steel cable. So for the steel cable, we just have to say it is 100% metallic and make it a little bit rougher, whoops and whoops changing the bolts i want the steel cable and this strength should go down There we go. I'm pretty happy with that steel cable look. The only thing we have to do is for this one, do this. Oh, this one's much larger. All right, we're almost there. We have to do the piston and a couple other textures, but we're pretty close so far. All right, so now the next thing we have to set up, well, there's really only one thing left and that is the hydraulic cylinders. So let's take a look at that. Um, so for this, uh, the, the, the UV unwrapping actually already looks pretty good. And if you recall, um, I, I looked up in the meantime, I just paused recording so that I could uh, figure some things out. I'm gonna use some corrugated steel, but not yet. But if we look at the, um, Hydraulic, I guess. Okay, I've, I've I've gone too deep into the um, into the search, but the the, the hydraulic um, cylinders tend to have like rings around them, and they tend to be very polished. So let's see if we can't recreate that effect. So once again, we're going to choose input um, texture coordinate, and then we're going to choose a noise shader or a noise texture, I should say. We're gonna use the UVs. We're gonna temporarily look at this. Um, we're gonna crank the scale. And what you can see is that it's, you know, it creates this like noise pattern. I'm gonna hit Control A to apply scale. Okay, I guess it already is. But what we want is we want lines. And so I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. You can see it's still going up and down, but if I select everything here and I do it like like this, there we go. 
I now have that ring pattern because I've shrunk the the UVs used to be like this, but I basically shrunk them down until they're just a single pixel high in the texture. And that gives you that kind of ring thing. And the more we scale it, the more rings we get. And so I'm going to do two things here. So if we look at the factor, we can take the factor and put that into our base color. And once it renders, we now have, you know, a bunch of that. We know we want this material to be metallic, basically almost chrome, very little roughness. And then what I'll do is I will create a um, color, brightness, and contrast. Oops, not gamma. There we go. And we'll make this a little bit brighter, not that bright. Something like that. That looks pretty good for a, a piston. And we'll also, because you know these are our scuff marks and stuff, we will use this with a bump uh, node in the height, put this into normal. And obviously it's way too strong. This should be very, very small. So something like that. And there is our hydraulic piston texture. Um, probably can have a little bit more roughness. This could probably be even smaller. But it should be there. You should always have it there. So let's uh, do the same thing to our other piston. There we go. So that looks like a well-used hydraulic piston. Let's go to our camera angle. So what I want to do is kind of get in some of those um, other... Um, I want to get the walls in for the shop, but I don't want to, you know... The goal was to texture and material just the the car hoist, so I don't want to spend too much time on modeling anything for this project, so uh, I do want to get some walls in there. Now, I realize you have this thing called garage, but uh, I'm, I, I just made my own, so we're just going to roll with that. Uh, so, whoops, what did I just do? I hid everything somehow. don't want okay I'm not sure what I did there so I'm just gonna undo until I get everything back there we go all right so go into edge mode I'm gonna just extrude these two edges to the ceiling I'm gonna go into face mode select this hit P so this I'm gonna call where is it I'm gonna rename this floor I'm going to rename these walls. I'm going to unwrap, reset, unwrap, unwrap. That actually looks pretty good, kind of like what I expected. Um, let's get some lights in here. So if you're thinking about a shop, typically you might have one big door that's open and then you would have some like strip lights along the top. Now I'm going to plan this for, um, cycles, but I mean, I guess we may as well play with EV a little bit. So we want this, we want, we have ambient inclusion. That's good shadows we have that's good so let's um get rid of this point light and we're going to create a area light just like that and 
we'll do a few of them as if they were overhead lights. And each of these should probably be more powerful. And then, you know, if you were thinking about this as being an actual garage, you'd probably have like one, like maybe open bay where daylight can come in. So for these lights, um, I'm going to make each one of them just a little bit warm. Just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit warm. So... I wonder if I could do this. That didn't work. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can do that. Well, I'm just going to copy that color. Oh, looks like it did work. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another area light. Or actually, we'll create a sunlight. And we'll make it look like it's coming from this direction. Or actually, let's see. Relative to the camera from this direction. And so we, we have our ceiling lights, but then we'll also have, like, you know, a sunlight. Um, which will be, you know, a bright white color, no nonsense light. And this background, this, uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, that, that metallic map did not help it at all. Even the roughness map isn't doing the best that it could do. Yeah, not really loving the corrugated steel, <clears throat> but it is what it is. So we'll do one more area light. Um, uh, just to get some front kind of lighting on there. And, you know, I'm not in love with this camera angle because these all line up a little bit too much. I actually feel like a top-down camera angle would look a little bit better. So let's do that. Why can I not select the camera? There we go. All right, so I want these pieces to be a little bit more orangey. I mean, they should be yellow, but they shouldn't be like cartoony yellow. This is probably a little bit too dark. And maybe should be a little bit more rough. For the camera angle, you can't see this contact point very well. So I'm going to actually click on the floor there, select the camera, go into 
uh, rotate around the 3D cursor, rotate, and just rotate just a little bit so it looks like that. One thing I'm noticing is that uh, this piece of geometry looks a little bit strange, so I'm going to tidy that up. Same with this. I think this needs more, although that didn't do what I was expecting. I guess that's just a shadow, but I should probably do the same thing here. Um, these corrugated walls are distracting me. What's going on? Oh, subsurface. That's not what I want. Base color is what I want. What is this base color? It's that. Let's create a color ramp and just something like that. And you know, also let's let's do a hue saturation in there and give it a little bit of value with I guess we can't do that. We have to do a um mix RGB. What I want to do is just not have it be gray. So Let's mix in some other color. A little bit of orange, maybe. Here we go. That looks a little bit better now. Um, probably the roughness needs to be even less. Now the floor does look shiny, but it looks uh, a little bit wrong. So I'm going to first scale the UVs so that the texture is much finer grain. Maybe not that much, but a little bit more. There we go. And I feel like it's a little bit too shiny. So here is our roughness map. White is closer to rough. Zero is closer to shiny, so we want it to be a little bit darker, or I mean a little bit lighter, so it's less less uh, shiny. And I might even just take the color down a little bit, and let's make it a little bit bluer, I think, as well. So I'm going to get a hue saturation, and here's what we're dealing with. So I'm going to turn the value down just a bit, and the hue will make a little bit blue. I feel like it would look nice. something like that and there we go so I like that it's, it's a little bit polished you you can see a little bit of reflection in there now this blue pillar I think is suffering from the same thing that the yellow was where it's trying to stretch the light across the entire surface so just by going in here and adding a couple edge loops and then splitting it up in the middle I feel like the light will probably play a little bit nicer with this material. And then probably also should do oops, a couple edge loops in these directions. Same thing for this one. Just makes the lighting look a little bit nicer. Um, did we do this one already? We did. All right, so I'm, I'm starting to like this rendering. I feel like, um, you know, this is, it's not the best, but it's also EV, and I don't really like EV that much, so I'm not crazy about rendering in EV. I feel like these lights could be maybe a little bit stronger because it is pretty gloomy in here right now. Oh, that's nice. They're all linked. That's good. So this one. Let's now switch over to cycles because 
like I said, I'm not a huge fan of EV. It's it's okay for what it is, but um, I feel like with cycles you can get much better renders. So let's go into cycles, and I'm going to switch to GPU. Hopefully this doesn't lag the video. All right, so I'm going to go and do a high quality render and then we'll see where we're at there. All right, and so I just did a cycles render and uh, let's take a look at some of the things that I think could stand to be improved. So I only did it at 128 samples. I could have done it at more, but the things that catch my eye, first of all, is that these things, these little braces that hold up the hydraulic tubing, despite the fact that I think that they're too small, and that the hydraulic tubing is too small, I think these braces are way too shiny. In a similar vein, I think that these pulley wheels would not be <clears throat> nearly as shiny as they are. So the, I, we need to turn down the shininess on these um, objects, but I do like the shininess on the bolts um, and the shininess on like this piece of metal, but I think that those need to go down. Now, from a modeling perspective, I feel like these knobs are too small and I feel like this rod is too small. I feel like there's some um, scaling issues that make this look unrealistic. Um, if I'm thinking of this as a car hoist in real life, I feel like this this rod would be a lot thicker and the knob would be a little bit bigger. Um, so I feel like there's some like, you know, human error scale issues off. But I feel like these, these uh, lift crane bars actually came out very nice. Really like that. The blue, however, and you know, I'm also ignoring like the cement in the background. I just wanted something to be there, but I wasn't focused too hard on that. But the blue, it's a little bit too desaturated. Uh, it needs to be darker, it needs to be richer. And also the lighting doesn't look correct on it. The lighting looks way too fake. So uh, I want to change that. And then, you know, I did lighten up this material, but uh, looking at it after having done a render, I feel like it does need to come back down again and maybe be a little bit glossier. So let's see if we can make some of those changes. So I'm going to go into solid mode here, if Blender will allow me to. I really like 2.8, but there are some glitches. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do some of those things. So. Um, I forget what it's called. It's called like thicken or what is it? It's like alt S or something. Let me, let me, let me see if I can figure this out. Okay. So I had to do some research to figure out what the uh, shortcut key was, but so what I want to do is make this rod a little bit wider. So, um, what you could do is you could go into edit mode and then scale it, but then it pokes out the other side and then you could try to scale it on the correct local axis which works which you know what i'm gonna keep it that way but the other thing that you could do which we could show on this one is if we select this you could also hit well we don't want this piece to be affected so i'm going to go into x-ray choose my circle select and turn off the top bits but what we could do is turn off x-ray we could hit alt s and do what's called a shrink fat, which makes it thicker without having to scale. And so I think now both of these look much better. Uh, the same thing has to happen. So for this one, we'll just do a regular scale and we'll do like, let's say one point, let's say one scale 1.2, maybe. I feel like that's a little bit more realistic scale. Do the same thing here, scale 1.2. All right, so that's good. Now for this material, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control B and select this, and that gives you a rectangle. And when I go into rendered mode, it will only render this particular area of the screen. So we'll go into uh, shading, do the same thing. And I don't need really this viewport anymore. So I'm just going to merge these two and let's just look at this so i felt like this should go more smooth and also darker 
initially I was a little bit uh, skeptical about how dark I should go, but now I feel like having seen it, it looks a little bit too fake uh, without having gone a little bit darker. And now let's zoom out and look at this whole pillar. And if you recall, what I said is the blue should be a little bit darker and richer and perhaps the the, you know, the, the surface imperfections should be highlighted a little bit more. So we have a pretty desaturated blue here. So let's just bring this in like that. That looks a lot better already. But then I really want to see this like, you know, surface detail. So I'm going to dial down the roughness a lot. Not too much, but a lot. Okay, I think that looks better already. So let's um, hit Control Alt B to clear that. And if we go into our, if we select our camera and go into camera settings, um, I think what we can do uh, where is it? I always struggle with this because. There's so many settings in Blender, and it's it's impossible to remember all of them. But uh, somewhere there is a setting for, there we go. So we want to blacken out everything except for our render, so we can just get a good look at our render. So I feel like that looks better already. Um, <clears throat> We might want to take some world lighting and introduce just some global lighting. And so, yeah, I think our metal needs to be a little bit rougher. And this is like, you know, for these braces and for these pulley wheels, which look pretty off. In fact, for the pulley wheels, I think what I'm going to do is just go here two materials, duplicate this one, call it pulley wheel. And for pulley wheel, I just want these guys to be significantly darker, maybe even a little bit like warm but still dark yeah see that looks better right now so let's do that for let's go to um, solid and just switch all of these to pulley wheel not that you'd ever see these ones because they're not in the render but you know you get the idea so rendered save We can turn off viewport overlays. Now my viewport's only going to render um, 32 samples, so it doesn't look the best, but it is a good approximation of what your final render will look like. So um, let's see, I didn't like the color. It was too bright. You didn't see the surface detail enough. It looked a little bit too faded. This was too bright and not shiny enough. These were too small. I still feel like they might be too small, but they're bigger now. Um, so uh, these wheels are now no longer like fucking chrome. <laughs> so let's uh, let's see what else can we change here. I like this lighting pretty okay, but I feel like the background and the floor are too distracting. So let's go to our floor, and I'm going to turn this down even more. And then I'm going to go to our walls and also make that pretty muted. What I really want to do is like
All right, and so for this metal piece, it now looks, I don't know, it doesn't look right. So let's um, play with that a little bit. Let's make the base color a little bit darker. And maybe we'll compensate for the darkness by making it a little bit less rough. You know what? I still feel like let's go into solid mode again. I still feel like these these controls are too small. So let's uh, see what we could do here. I gotta turn on my overlays. So let's make this 1.3 again. Let's go here and thicken this just a little bit. Maybe not that much, but a little bit. All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this is starting to shape up because, you know, we, we still have a bright blue, but if you really look at it, what we've done is we've we've started with a pretty dark blue, but just by the lighting and the reflection, we've managed to bring the value up so that it looks a little bit better. Um, and I think, in my opinion, more realistic. Same thing with the yellow. I mean, the, the yellow is... <laughs> pretty dark but then it becomes brighter because of the lighting and because of the reflection uh, the bolts are nice and shiny but then we also have another metal material which isn't as exaggerated so that there's a little bit of contrast between our metals i feel like having these knobs and these um, control arms be a little bit thicker uh, adds to the realism i don't have the time right now to go in and make these pneumatic piping as thick as they ought to be but i did do a little bit there um, I'm glad that I turned the background and the cement floor down because uh, now there's a little bit more contrast between the object in the foreground and the background. Um, you can see that there is the steel cable, but it's in this dark cavity, so you don't really need to know what it's doing. You can see that there's a pulley there, but again, it's not the focus of your attention, so it just kind of blends into the background. So at this point, the only thing I really want to do is get the decals on there, and then I think I'm good to call it. Um, I was talking earlier about maybe possibly getting this into a game engine ready format, but uh, I decided, uh, you know, that that would be basically a separate video because converting these um, you know, these procedural textures into something that would be ready for a game engine is a topic on its own. There's actually a, a lot involved in that and we're already well past an hour. We're, you know, we're at an hour and a half or, or something like that. At least from my perspective, having recorded this, we're already that far into it. So I don't want to push it too further um, and try to put too much into one topic. So for this, I'm gonna leave it at procedurally generated textures, uh, with the exception being the decals, and then we'll call it there. And, and then if you wanna continue the, the conversation and talk about how we could possibly get this into a game engine, um, or make this uh, you know something that you could upload and share on the web, then you have to use image textures because image textures uh, will work in any platform. Whereas procedural textures will just work inside Blender. Now other software such as you know Cinema 4D or, or Maya or whatever, they'll also have procedural textures. However, procedural textures are not something that you can export as a file format. So, uh, you know, if you set up your procedural textures in Blender, they won't be compatible in some other software. Whereas if you used image textures, then they would be. Um, and there, there is a process to convert procedural textures into image textures um, in Blender. Uh, but I'm not going to cover that in this topic because or in this video, because I feel like the scope of the video was to get this, you know, materialized 
or you know to put materials on it and use any type of texturing procedural or otherwise to get it looking nice and i feel like uh, i'm very close to accomplishing that and the the last few things i want to do is put on some warning labels um and then and then do a final render and see how it looks so um if there's interest in in you know the discussion of turning this into a game engine ready asset then i would gladly follow up with another video and talk about that. But I feel like for the scope of this video, um, I've already spent enough time just talking about getting the materials ready and setting up the procedural texture generation that I don't need to uh, go further and explain those other things. And I'm actually pretty happy with where we are right now. So uh, the last thing is to get those decals. And once we do that, we'll do a final render and see how everything looks. All right, and so, like I said, I, you know, I just paused the video, um, took a little break, came back. <laughs> I said I was going to go bed to bed at 10 o'clock tonight, and we're already at 1230, but I am having fun, and it is the case that I get sucked into things, and so uh, I guess we'll just wrap this up right now. The last thing that I wanted to do was go in and put some of these warning labels on there and put a logo uh, on there. I think I have this 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 logo here so as we can see if we look at uh, this reference photo uh, on the side you have this kind of forward lift logo and then above the controls you have this little sticker panel now I could do more I could put another sticker panel here and I could put like a little thing on the box um, interesting to note that you have a button here where uh, this actually appears to be a rotating switch but regardless um, I feel like, you know, you could go unlimited. You could try to put this box in here and put a sticker there. I'm going to do two more things. I'm going to put this logo on the, the pillars, and then I'm going to put uh, a little warning label, um, you know, above the, the controls right here. So there'll be like a logo here that's going to be, that's kind of unfortunate. It's going to be intersected by this. this Maybe I'll put it on this side because this pneumatic line is coming down here. And this is an old render, by the way. I'm going to close that because right now it actually looks much better. So we're going to put the logo here and then we'll put like a warning label above this. And maybe I'll put the logo on the other side as well. So um, we're going to do that. And we're going to do that with uh, the least possible resistance. So here we have the blue paint. Okay. And right now there is no texture data. So let's get, let's get some textures on this blue paint right so i'm thinking about the best way to do that now we're using object generated uvs here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a new texture and you know what, let's just uh go back to look dev for now wait for it to pop in Okay, here we go. All right, let's, um, okay, good. Let's go in here and add a image texture. All right, and we're gonna choose this logo. And what we wanna do is we wanna have this logo be the logo and then everywhere else we want it to be this blue color oops so I'm gonna get a mix RGB and then what we'll do is whoops we'll take the color of the logo and put it into here and we'll use the alpha as the factor and we'll put this blue color as everything else so now the logo is going to be way too big, but what we want to do is go into input and choose a uh, texture coordinate. And we want to use UV for this. Note that we're still using generated for the noise texture. But now what we can do is split this off. Window, there we go. Put this into UV um, editor. And then for, let's go into solid mode and we can turn on our overlays for this we're gonna say um, unwrap reset 
everything's going to be a square and we're just going to put it somewhere over there. So now if we go into um, our look dev, what we should find, it's not working the way I'm expecting it to. I might have to switch these two. Okay, good. So it's everything is blue, but we want to put this forward logo on this front face and we want to put it on probably these two faces. I'm going to take these two faces and I'm going to go to front view or I guess this view. Um, I hit control one. So that's back view I'm going to hit project from view. And then I'm going to just rotate this 90 degrees and do something like that. And as you can see, we have repeating. So I'm just going to put some extra edge loops in there and then go into face mode and choose these two faces and just move them out of the way. So what we've done here is, you know, like the high frequency detail is coming from this noise texture. And then we use this image texture here and we say wherever the image is transparent, we're going to have dark blue instead. And that's what we're going to use for the color. And then when we did the UV unwrapping for this, we took all of the faces and just put them in some empty part where we know we're going to have blue. And then only the part where we want the logo is where we put the logo. So let's do that on the other side, try to, you know, copy it as best we can. Um, you know, one thing that, you know, if I was building this from scratch myself, I probably would have just done a mirror modifier so I didn't have to edit things on both sides. But, you know, we're working with what we were given. So let's just continue working that way. So <clears throat> we're going to go into here, select everything. We're going to say um, unwrap reset and make sure it's small in some inconsequential part and then let's go here and I'll, I'll try to get like the um like the, the 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 cuts to be at the same level so i'm going to go into edge mode select this edge loop i'm going to say cursor to selected then i'm going to go into edit mode on this one i'm going to insert an edge loop i'm going to go to cursor scaling mode scale on z to zero and so now we have an edge loop at the same height there. We'll go over here, select this, this edge loop, cursor to selected, do the same thing here, insert an edge loop, scale Z zero. And then now we can take in face mode, these two faces, say unwrap, project from view, scale them up, rotate them 90, and scale them until they fit the logo about the same. So like that. All right, so we have the decal for the logo. The, the top bar is still messed up, so we'll just undrop, reset, take everything and put it in some part where it's just solid color blue. Uh, and so now we'll just do the same thing above this uh, lever. We just wanna put those decals in for like the warnings. So we have these two faces, which seem reasonable to me. I'll just put an edge loop here so that like we can deal with just those two faces. Um, and we're gonna do the same Thing. So I'm going to take this and <clears throat> we'll take another image texture, put it up here. We're going to open up, we're going to choose the decals. We're going to use this in UV space. And now what we want to do is we also want to mix this in so that we could map with this. Now this is kind of, this is not a non-standard way of texturing, but it's a way of doing it where you don't have to worry too much about, um, you know, uh, figuring out how to paint complicated texture maps. We're basically just mixing images in, in the nodes uh, so that we have them on various places, but we're not doing it um, as a single continuous image. Now, if, like I said, if you want this to be part of a game engine, than the proper way, or if you want this to be in any other application that's real time, the proper way would be to have one continuous image. But uh, I'm, I'm, my goal is just to get this render looking good and materialed and textured good. Uh, 
I'm not doing this to to make a game engine ready and if if you want that that'll be a separate video so um you know i'm just kind of using nodes so that i don't have to do that sort of thing so that's where we're going with that here so in this case um, because we're already using these uv coordinates for this logo uh, what we can do is go into this menu uh, with our object selected uh, is it this menu oh particles we want um what is it? Oh, vertices, right? We want this. So, go down to UV maps. We have our default UV map. But if we create another one and we call this one warning decals, as long as we have this one selected, uh, we can project the texture a little bit differently. So, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take this mix node and we're going to mix in the color here with the alpha and we're going to instead of using this UV node we're going to instead use uh, an input UV map and choose the warning decals so if we look at this um, it looks horribly wrong but with this selected, we are going to, um, hmm, I'm actually thinking about what's the best way to do this. I think what I want to do is actually go into Photoshop and edit this texture just a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I'm being stupid right now. I'm going to just, yeah, I'm going to not be stupid. How about that? <laughs> I'm going to delete this um, and we're going to do this the, the right way. So. Um, here we have our, our files. I'm going to take both of these, bring them into Photoshop, and I'm going to take the forward logo and move it to the bottom. And I'm going to take the warning logo and paste it and move it over here. And then I'm going to save this as a uh, frame textures okay that, that'll that make it much more sense I mean I you know there's there's multiple ways to do it I want to do the one that makes the most sense so that I can clearly communicate it so I'm going to switch this one out to be the file we just saved and of course the textures are now broken on both sides but that's fine because all we have to do is in this editor right here choose our new thing frame textures and all I want to do is in this case bring this down to about there and oh we're in the wrong there we go so just bring that so that faces that go into here All right, and then now we can just go here and take these two uh, faces in face mode, go here, go to the front side, say project from view. And then now we can just expand this and move it over here. All right, there we go. So we have our logos. And you know what? I feel like the logo should go up a little bit. So let's take these faces. Let's say grab Z 0 0.2. Do the same thing over here. Grab Z 0 0.2. And then for these two faces, I'm just going to scale that up a little bit. All right. So we have our warnings above the switch. Our materials are looking, I think, pretty good. 
Um, I'm going to do a high quality render. Uh, let's see, let's check our settings. So we have output, let's go to layers. We have, let's turn on denoising. That's super critical, especially if you're using uh, cycles. Um, and I'm gonna go to my render settings. I'm gonna say my render is gonna be 256 and our output is 1080p, that's fine. I, I think we're, we're good to go. Maybe the floor could be a little bit less shiny. Let's do a little bit less um, shiny. Um, but keep it nice and dark. And I think the, uh, the back walls are good for now. Yeah, and you know what? I'm even gonna just uh, just for, just for funsies, I'm gonna do 200% just to uh, make it super high quality. So I'm gonna save here. Uh, I'm gonna hit render. I'm gonna pause recording, hit render, and then we'll see where we're at at that point. All right, and so here is our render, and already I think that we are looking a lot better than the last render. The materials just seem more convincing. They feel more like they're part of their environment, uh, but they're still not perfect. So uh, one of the things that stands out to me is that both of the decals that we just put on seem way too bright relevant or relative to their environment. So I wanna go in and turn the brightness down on these. Um, another thing is these bolts now seem too shiny. I mean, I was optimistic with how glossy they should be in the first place, but just like we turned down the shininess on the wheel, I feel like these should also be a little bit less bright, both by turning down their color to make it a little bit darker, but also a little bit less reflection. One thing that I also forgot to do last time was I mentioned on the previous render that I felt like these brackets were too shiny. Um, I forgot to change it. They should be less shiny. Um, this thing still needs some work. Um, the noise, if you look at the, the, the noise texture on this piece versus this piece, this is way bigger. This needs to be way tinier. And also I feel like it should be darker. For whatever reason, I'm always conservative and I think that it, nothing should ever be pure black because when you make something pure black, it always looks fake. If you make something pure white, it always looks fake, just like these decals are sticking out right now. So I was being conservative and not going completely pure black, but I feel like this really does need it. It needs higher frequency texture here and then also pure black. Now I do like the frequency of the texture on this yellow paint as well as on the blue paint, but I feel like the blue paint can maybe even be a little bit more reflective. It is very reflective along the top, but um, there's a lot of lights up there. But over here, if you've ever seen this type of metallic, well, it's not even metallic paint like car paint, but it's just shiny, glossy paint. I feel like this could still go a little bit shinier with a little bit more bump map. Now, I'm not too con con concerned about the background or the floor, but I feel like they worked pretty well for what it is. Um, one thing that I always try to do is in real life, there's very few bright colors. Even if you see a poster or a picture or something that looks very bright, chances are it's in fact not that bright, at least not as bright as you think it is. So one of the things I'm gonna do is turn these decals down so that they're not as bright, but also I feel like I'm really happy with the yellow, but it could go a little bit darker. I'm really happy with the blue, but it could go a little bit desaturated. So I think we're very close, um, but there's a bunch of changes to be made. So let's go and beast mode through those changes because I need to sleep soon. So <laughs> the first thing is, um, this is uh, in, let's just uh, go here. We're in what, we're in look dev mode. Okay, so let's just uh, bring this up a little bit and then look at these labels. So uh, concrete, no, we want this. We want here, this, okay. So we have the textures that are mixed with blue, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a uh, hue saturation value, HSV, where is it? I don't see it, I know it's, I'm in the wrong menu, that's why. There we go, and put that on there. 
wait for shit to recalculate. And so for these labels, we want their value to go down a bit. Something like like that. that. That looks much more environmentally appropriate. I mean, before we had this, well, before we had this. And now, if we go to 0 0.5, that seems to fit better without being super obnoxious. Now, I said that I want this to uh, have better reflections. I think I should apply scale. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Let's go and do that for all of these. OK. Um, but I feel like the noise on the blue part, something needs to change. I mean, uh, it's, you know, maybe that's super reflective, but let's go and grab a piece of this and then go to rendered and see what it looks like. I mean, that looks way too... Let me go into my render settings and make the viewport a little bit higher so we could get a better example. So that looks a little bit better, but now I feel like the bump is a little bit too strong. So let's go, let's go half. Whoops. I'm not doing this very well. I feel like that's an improvement. And then one other thing that we want to do is we want the area where the decal is is to be more uh, reflective. So our roughness is 0 0.232. But we want the area where the decal is to be less rough. So if we take the alpha value, if we focus on this and we see the alpha value, um, what we, well, let's, yeah, there we go. There's the alpha value. We want it to be less rough where this is white. So we want to actually get a invert, take the alpha, and then we don't want it to be uh, purely uh, shiny so we'll take a color ramp put that into roughness and then if we look at this we want it to be 0.23 everywhere except for where the sticker is so we want this to be like this so that it's shiny, but then the sticker, this is opposite. The sticker should be, no, no, this is correct. The sticker should be super, super shiny. I'm not in love with it. So less rough means more shiny. Well, we'll have to do a render and see how it looks, but it looks a little bit better compared to. It's almost unnoticeable to be honest. that should be not shiny at all. I guess another thing we could do is if this is our noise texture, we would want there to be a little noise where it's more shiny. So we would want a multiply. So we would want to take the output of this and multiply them so that there's no noise where it is shiny. 
that looks a little bit better. Let's uh, still turn the value down even more. Let's see, we'll do a render and see how that looks. Now, um, before I forget, let's see what other things that we have to tackle here. I feel like, right, so let's go into solid mode just because it's easier. So these things, they're all metal. We're gonna, call, we're gonna, whoops, gonna create a new one called metal bracket. And uh, this thing, needs to be way less shiny should still be metallic maybe a little bit darker something like that I mean before it was way too shiny so let's go into solid mode and this one now needs to become the material bracket um, this one and then on the other side All right, and then another thing that I thought uh, previously was that um, these bolts were too shiny. So I wanna bring them down. So we'll make their base color a little bit darker, but then also a little bit more rough. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right. And then I said, I feel like, you know, everything looks good, but things in real life tend to be too saturated uh, to be believable. So these should go like here. A little bit more, there we go. And probably, oh, okay, and then we said that for this, um, if we look at this zoomed up, the noise is way too big. So let's make this like double, maybe more. And then its color needs to go basically to pure black. And perhaps it's this should let's let's have its strength for its normal map and now roughness somewhere around there maybe the normals can go up a little bit let's try to all right. So here's what I was looking at before. I felt like the yellow was a little bit too bright. I felt like the decals were a little bit too bright. I felt like the surface texture of this was good, but not the kind of paint texture I was looking for. I felt like these were too bright. I felt like the darkness of this was too, too bright and that the, uh, uh, frequency of the noise texture was too little um, I felt like the bolts were too bright so I feel like I got most of the changes that I wanted to see so I'm gonna close this render I feel like it's looking really good in the viewport we'll turn off viewport layers real quick um, I feel like this is looking really good so I'm gonna do another render I'm gonna stop recording do another render and then I will see you on the other side of that All right, and here is our render, and I am much happier already. So we made the yellow color darker and desaturated, but it's still 
really pops in the final render because yellow is such a bright, strong color that if you have it on anything besides you know, mid range that it's going to be very bright in your scene. And so even though we turned the um, saturation and the value of the yellow down, it still looks very strong in our final render. One of the other things that we did was we turned down the value for the stickers and now they feel much more natural in the scene. Uh, compared to our previous render, these were bright white and the outline of this uh, forward lift was bright white and it just didn't fit right. It looked like somebody had pasted a texture there. Also, um, you can see that this is a very reflective surface because you can imagine that a sticker has a glossy surface compared to the paint that it's stuck down on. It's still not perfect. You can see that there is a very clear line here. In real life, there would be some dirt and some grime that would have built up between the sticker and the surface, but it is uh, more shiny. It's more glossy now. Uh, but they're also more subdued. Their, their colors have been toned down a bit, but they still feel good in the scene. So now when you see this final render, you're not your eyes are not drawn to this, like, why is there this bright thing here? Or why is there this bright thing here? So that succeeded. The toning down of the yellow succeeded. I think the toning down of the um, the glossiness and the reflectiveness of the bolts succeeded. But one thing that I noticed, I'm not sure if this was my fault or the original author's fault, but it seems like this uh, shaft and base and its, its subsequent bolts have been shaded smooth. Now, I am a fan of shading things smooth, so I may have done that accidentally, but you can see that that even comes into the shader. Up here on this one, which is decidedly not smooth, you can see those hard edges. Uh, you know, this looks like a flat surface, and then this looks like a flat surface at a different angle. But on the one that's shaded smooth, you see the shading here is really weird and bendy. And then when you look down here, these look fake, and like the sides look fake, and the, what is the light doing here? It's weird. Uh, whereas this looks like a solid edge. So, um... I, I've already taken the liberty of, um, hold on, let me uh, get my bearings here, of shading this flat again. So in the render, uh, I don't know if it was me or if it was uh, uh, the OP, but uh, this was shaded smooth for some reason and I hadn't caught that and that is now shaded flat. So in our next render, that will look much better. Um, other things, uh, let's see, so this uh, black material looks much better now because the, the high frequency detail is smaller as it should be for this type of painted surface. Uh, but this detail still looks pretty big, so I have also gone ahead off camera and I basically just increased the scale of the noise for this black plastic to be, we could probably even go even higher really if we wanted to. Um, so that it's not as big as the paint that's near it. Um, what else did we change? Not much. I think that that was like the biggest of the issues uh, and they have been tackled. Oh yeah, we, we also made, um, in the previous edits, we made these little braces that hold the hydraulic hoses, a different metal material that isn't as shiny and bright and they look a lot better now because instead of having like your eyes draw onto like one focused point of light it's now just an incidental element in the picture and you just your eyes aren't drawn to it so overall you know we toned down the color on the blue we toned down the color on the yellow but even when we made the yellow you know if we if we click on this material like look at what an ugly dark color of yellow this is but yet, once it's introduced to the lights, it actually pops and becomes more vibrant. So toning down those colors, um, you know, to be less obnoxiously bright, uh, making sure that our materials are the proper uh, reflectiveness, the proper smoothness, the proper metallicness, all of those things, and adding edge loops where necessary so that we don't have that weird geometry uh, shading issue. All in all, I feel like this is pretty close to my final render on the subject. Now, of course, like I said, this is a render and this side looks good, but this side unfortunately had shading smooth on. So I'm going to have to render that again. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this guy because it's it's very shiny, uh, whereas this one and this one and 
this one all look normal so i might have forgot to put a material on that one and then finally um i noticed that there's like some weird shading going on here and that's probably because of a lack of edge loops so i'm going to do one more render and then i'm going to call it a night <laughs> i was supposed to be a bed a couple hours ago but i've been having fun so i'm going to do one more render all right and so let's look at why let me go into to solid view here and focus in on this uh, why the rendering doesn't look good here and if we go into edit mode we can see that it's because there's really not enough geometry around here to make it look good now we can kind of hack that in I'm gonna hit K for knife tool and you know this isn't the best solution but it works I'm gonna just go across go down and then complete the loop and then when I hit enter it already looks a lot better and that's because the edges like right here you have a hard transition from flat surface to 90 degrees flat surface and that transition is going to blend across that surface so if we just put some extra geometry in right at the border it looks a lot better let's go into rendered Let's put a box around this so we don't have, well, actually, let's go into camera. Why isn't it not letting me? I mean, it already looks significantly better. And let me go into solid and make sure I didn't fuck anything up. Yeah, yeah, it looks better. So we can't see this one on camera, but I'll go ahead and do it anyways, just, just for fun. So you could already tell, even without the, the, the camera mode, that, hold on, I gotta hide my walls because they're in the way. Even without the camera mode, you can tell the shading is all kinds of messed up. But if we just knife tool and draw a nice little perimeter around here. it immediately clears up even before you go back into rendered. So that was the thing that I wanted to fix. And uh, the other thing was, why is this guy so bright? And it's probably because I forgot to, to give him a material. So I'm gonna hit Shift B to do a zoom box, click on this object, and yeah, there's no material on him. So we're gonna choose uh, metal for that. If I recall correctly, or that could be bolt, let's see. What did I choose for this one? Uh, I chose bolts. Okay, let's go over here and choose bolts. Okay, so uh, if you bring up my last render, if we still have it here, I thought that was too bright. Okay, we fixed that. I thought that this was a weird glitch. We fixed that. And then, you know, everything else is basically, in my opinion, something that I would fix up. Sorry, I just touched the mic. It's something I would fix up in, in um, Mesh. Now there are some things that we could do, and like I said, I'm not gonna make this game engine ready uh, in this video. If, if that's a, a topic that we wanna breach, we'll talk about it in a future series, but uh, there are some things you could do. For example, like this is a car hoist. So one thing, if I wanted to make this scene more realistic, I would paint grease spots on the ground using texture painting. But right now, this hoist also looks brand new as if it was just installed from the factory. Uh, but if I wanted to make this more convincing, I would paint, you know, little paint flicks and paint chips along these these beams, especially the top part that goes underneath the chassis of the car. I would paint rust spots on open exposed areas. I would, you know, put wear and tear marks on this. You know, I would paint grease, especially around like the bottom where like, you know, things spill and run towards and dust collects in these these corners. If I wanted to make this photo realistic, uh, there's still a lot that I would have to do, both in terms of modeling and in terms of texturing. Uh, but I feel like if you're, you know, th this, you know, knowing no other context other than this was the model that was given to me, um, I feel like, you know, this is this is a brand new model and, and there was no detail given about what the shop should look like. I, I just kind of chose some beat up, 
corrugated steel walls and I chose a random concrete texture for the floor. But this, this car crane or car hoist could be installed anywhere. Um, and so I, I don't really feel like the scope of the project should be uh, that I make those decisions for the artist. The artist, um, you know, if we go back to the post, asked me, uh, pretty new to Blender, making a model of vehicle hoist, which, by the way, Terry, great job. When I look at your um, your mesh, yeah, there's some, some, some places that could be improved, like I demonstrated in the video, but overall, this is a very good mesh for a beginner. Uh, so, so good job there. Um, but when you try to add textures or lights of any sort, it becomes unbelievable. I assume you mean unrealistic. I assume you're going for photorealism. Um, and would anyone be up here for texturing so I could see what it should look like? Well, yes, I did. And I not only made a video for you, but I will share this file with you. And hopefully uh, you can learn something from that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, I don't think it's perfect. I did my best. Um, it's definitely not perfect. Uh, but, you know, I did my best, and uh, hopefully hopefully it's, it's something that you can learn from. So, given the context of, of this post by Terry uh, Arsenault, um, I, I feel like, you know, this is, I hope this is something you can appreciate, and this is something that you can use to better yourself and your career with Blender. Um, I also found this fun, you know, like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, um, you know, uh, I want to kind of do a video series where I just kind of help people out. So all things considered, you know, the background was was not part of the the topic. The, the floor was not part of the topic. And whether or not this should look like it's been well used or if it's brand new was not part of the topic. If I if I wanted to make this look like it was a well used piece of equipment that's been in a shop for like decades and and well loved, I you know, I would paint scratch marks here. I would, you know, tear off layers of paint and paint rust and you know, I would paint a puddle of oil, you know, with different splotches all underneath this area because cars are hoisted up here and they they're, they're leaking and stuff. You know, if I wanted to add those types of of details, I would. But I think for the scope of the question of, you know, a newbie who wants to add textures, I feel like this this more than reasonably uh, satisfies that. So um, steps we could go from here would be uh, to to make a game engine ready, if that if that's what your goal was, or uh, to optimize the mesh or do other things. So uh, for now, though, you saw me correct this mistake and you saw me correct this material. So. I'm going to pause so I'm going to pause the video again do a final render and then uh, call it a night so uh, let's do that all right and here is that final render um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because this video is way too long already but basically it captures everything that um, I was hoping to do um, you know we fixed up that little piece it has the correct material this doesn't have weird uh, reflections on there uh, nothing else changed too much from the last render so this is my final cycles render. But one thing I did want to point out is that I'm actually surprisingly impressed with uh, EV here. Now, I'm still new to EV, and uh, I definitely have more experience with cycles. But after I turned off cycles and I was just rotating this in the viewport, I was pleasantly surprised uh, at how this looks. <laughs> you know, I, I got to play more with EV and spend some more time there. But anyways... So this is going to conclude this video. I hope to do more of this series. And again, I apologize for it being so long because I wasn't expecting this to be long. Hopefully when I help people in the future, um, I'll be able to make shorter videos or I'll choose topics that are maybe less, uh, uh, you know, daunting for, for, for a help video. But overall, I had fun. Um, so Terry, you should now have the file and the link to this video. And uh, hopefully you learn something. Hopefully everyone learned something. And uh, hopefully I'll have more of these Help a Stranger videos uh, coming soon. And hopefully a little bit shorter. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you want to see more. Uh, I'm going to have original tutorials coming up as well as more of this Help a Stranger series. All right. Uh, see you next time.